Hey, what's up YouTube here with another video and today I just want to talk about some games that deserve a remaster, remake, or a sequel. So I'm mainly going to be looking at games that are inaccessible. Maybe there hasn't been a sequel or another game in that franchise in a really long time. Or from the remake perspective, maybe a remake of the game would just be really cool. That's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna try to stay away from the obvious ones. Like, we're gonna obviously get a remaster of the Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. We're gonna get a new Fallout. We're gonna most likely get a new Devil May Cry. So I'm gonna stay away from the well-knowns and just try to stick to games that could deserve more attention. That's pretty much the point of this video. Uh, putting some light on some games that are fun and definitely deserve a remaster at the very least for accessibility sake that's one of the main reasons why i want to play some of these games or i want some of these games remade is just so that i can play them on modern consoles the first game on the list one of my favorites prototype i think prototype is a game that has a extremely fun core gameplay loop, the movement system, the combat, the power fantasy is, I guess, the emphasis of the game. And it's really cool and really fun. It's one of the few games where you can run around and elbow drop tanks and run into a crowd of civilians and they all fly around when ragdolls. It's, it's one of those games. I think a remaster or a remake of the first one would be cool because they could use that as an opportunity to just add on top of what they already had fix up some stuff add more animations make it look prettier more powers more abilities or they could go the sequel route where we can get a prototype 3 all new protagonist all new city either either or what i really just want is a new prototype in some way shape or form the one problem with this is the, besides the obvious of the people that make Prototype not being around anymore, I think the game is definitely a product of its time. As an early, I think 2009 game, it's violent in the super excessive way that doesn't really jive with people nowadays. You can sort of run into a crowd of people and kill them in very gory fashion with like the whip power and just punch them and blah blah blah. And, you know, it's very callous when it comes to the civilians and how much death and destruction is going around. And people don't really fuck with that nowadays. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to sit up here and say, oh, everyone's sensitive nowadays. But it, it is it is what it is. So I don't know how well a modern prototype would translate, especially because making the graphics look better just inherently increases the sort of gross factor. I don't really know another way to put it, but making the game look prettier, making the blood and guts look more HD isn't going to help the fact that it can be a little off-putting to some people. And the games themselves, I'm sure they've, they're niche, you know, uh, people don't really, I guess, like the sort of power fantasy games, which to my surprise, I think they're very fun. But regardless, still, a new prototype in some way, shape, or form would be really cool. My Plargy and Snagglebees devours your mutant swamp fly. Oh yeah, I bet you didn't see that one coming. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Check and mate. What? Th 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 that's cheating! On the contrary, the rules clearly state that the Plargy and Snagglebeast has an allergic reaction to swamp flies that last two turns. Ooh, it is on again. The next game I want to talk about is the old Ratchet and Clank games mainly the ps3 ones so that's the future trilogy a crack in time tools and destruction uh there might be another one i should have fucking did my research before recording but whatever those and the ps2 games so the first one going commando up your arsenal those all all those games are still pretty much locked to the playstation 3 now in theory, you can play some of them through the PlayStation Plus, but it's streaming. And 
don't nobody want to stream a game like it's just it's not the same especially ones that run in 60 fps it's it you get input delay it's it's awful it's just not the optimal way to play these games and i think the future trilogy especially it would be nice to play those games with you know not an entire re you know maybe not like remake level of updates but higher resolution a more solid 60 fps and you're good to go for me i, I think that's all the uh future trilogy needs and why not just add the original ps2 games as well accessibility is a huge thing for me like i always just want to be able to play old good games on the new consoles because i don't know it it's just the way i am like i always want access to games that i know i'm gonna want to play in some shape or form eventually via a year down the line 10 years down the line i don't know i don't care even though i haven't beat all the ratchet and clank games i know i want to so the fact that i can't just buy every single one on my playstation 5 it's a little weird especially because that is a mainline playstation series that's one of their flagships and it's been that way for a long time so i do think ratchet and clank should be getting a little bit more love um and yeah we should be able to play majority of the franchise from just the ps5 i don't know if they need to do one giant collection of all of them or or a collection of the ps2 and a collection of the ps3 i don't know but figure it out and i'm i'm i don't care if the ps3 architecture is hard to work with i don't care everyone always says or the developers always say well it's hard to re it's hard to re-release ps3 games because the ps3 architecture is so unique blah 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 all this shit i don't care figure it out okay figure it the fuck out the ps3 games were on the ps5 damn near halfway through the ps5 we're gonna blink and be on the ps6 i want to play ratchet and clank okay Moving on, Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Now, I should have moved, I should have talked about this one after the prototype one because they sort of link into each other more naturally. But regardless, Hulk Ultimate Destruction, made by the same people that made Prototype, if you didn't know, that's why the gameplay looks very similar. This game definitely could use a remake slash remaster. I think it would be really cool. One, Hulk is just really cool. He deserves a good game, you know, especially nowadays. You know, we're not getting no Hulk representation in the MCU. They done turned him into a science nerd. Even in Endgame, he didn't do much. So I wish we just had some sort of media where I could see Hulk be Hulk and it's good. So a remaster of Ultimate Destruction would be perfect for me. Radical Heights games, Prototypes, Hulk, they get fun at the end of the day. They get fun. They get movement. They get they get Hulk, you know? Being able to take cars and turn them into boxing gloves. You can take two... You can take trucks and turn them into shields. You can run up a building and elbow drop a tank. Like, Radical Heights did a really good job of giving you that power fantasy and mixing that with a fun action game and hulk would definitely translate more than prototype because it's less violent you know what i mean who well, you you can kill civilians in the uh, original gamecube game but it's not violent you know like yeah you can hit them and they go flying but it's not very explicit so i think this game if they were ever going to bring back a prototype style game it would probably be better for them to go for the Hulk ultimate destruction route rather than the prototype route because then you completely avoid having to deal with the violent nature of prototype because if they made a prototype and then toned down the violence, I don't think prototype fans would be happy. Who gives a fuck about prototype fans to be honest? Just make a new prototype. I don't care. If it's T for teen, I don't care, man. Just make a new prototype. I want to elbow drop a tank again.
next game on the list, the original Spider-Man 2. Not Insomniac Spider-Man 2, but the original. Either on the GameCube, the Xbox, or the PS2. Mechanically, this game still holds up, especially when it comes to the swinging. But even the combat, uh, it's very simple, but it's fun. You know, it's fun on that surface level. You have a good amount of tools. You can bring enemies from, you know, you can launch enemies in the air, hit them with an air combo. You got web stuff, you got counters. Um, it, yeah, it, you can pile drive them from really up top. Um, there's there's a lot of cool stuff going on, going on with the combat system in this game, uh, especially for an early movie tie-in game. I think they definitely went above and beyond in terms of making the game actually fun. Just the game re-released, 60 FPS, higher resolution, even if they had the two big ass black bars on the side, I don't care. I just want a way to have the game downloaded onto a console and not be the only way to play the game be through emulators. I mean, obviously that's not the only way to play the game. but. In 2024, I don't have a GameCube or a PS3 or an original Xbox. I have a Wii. You get what I'm saying? So, a way to play the original Spider-Man 2, a way to play that game would be nice. But looking at it from the remaster slash remake perspective, I'm not going to lie. If they took the original Spider-Man 2 and, in theory, just made it better more moves more animations while you're swinging more fluid swinging more fluid combat less janky story missions um more collectibles more side stuff right made it more like an actual modern game but kept the core kept the swinging kept the fun and kept the combat and just added to it me personally i think it would blow insomniac's game out of the water just from a mechanical standpoint granted i'm not saying that the gameplay in those games aren't good or fun, especially the swinging. I think the swinging is great in both games. Whether or not they're better, I think it's honestly, it's just a it's just a matter of preference at this point. I mean, maybe someone could make the argument because of how much work that goes into the animations in Insomniac Spider-Man alone. Someone can make the argument that just that alone could make it better. But me, I do prefer the more tactile uh, mechanical feel that Spider-Man has in the original. You really, he, it almost feels like Spider-Man himself is like a Tony Hawk's pro skater. You know what I mean? Like you can do tricks. You have to manually do inputs to run up walls. It's harder to control your swings, but it's harder to pick up speed. But when you do, and when you learn how to, and when you figure out how to like actually use the system it, it feels really fun i still have a hard time to this day deciding is it funner to just swing around for no reason in the original spider-man 2 or in insomniac spider-man 2 i still honestly don't know because i do that for in, in both games i don't know how likely it is of the original spider-man 2 being re-released you know it, it, it seems like one of those things that would be really weird for licensing like how does that work like I don't know. That's what I expected from you. God Hand. I don't think I need to explain very much why a re-release or a remaster of God Hand would be really cool. One, it's an action game that isn't in 60 FPS. So a remaster of the game that just puts in a 60 that just puts in a 60 FPS already, we're we're good to go, you know. Already, I'm fucking happy, you know. I'm I'm there with 70 bucks, honestly. But let's take it a step further. Let's say we really got a re-release of God Hand. It's a bit more complicated with God Hand because unless Shinji Mikami is a part of it, I don't I don't know how well anyone would be able to really update God Hand without him. If you've been on this channel, I think you've heard me call games unique a lot because those are generally my favorite types of games. I say, oh, this game is unique. This is unique. That's unique. God Hand is unique. It is extremely unique. People say Dark Souls is hard. Fucking boot up God Hand. Boot up God Hand. Put it on normal difficulty. 
and tell me how long it takes you to beat the first level. It's one of those games. It's an extremely hardcore action game, but it's a hardcore action game that still gives you the tools to dominate once you understand the mechanics, once you realize that you can cancel out of damn near every single animation with the dodge. Once you realize that there's a few universal moves that uh, the main character has that he can use regardless of what he has equipped, and those are pretty good. All this shit, once you figure out how to turn around and target people and use crowd control, it becomes easier. If they remastered this game, and it really was, we're gonna take our hand and add more moves and make the graphics better and add more content and fill out this game because a big aspect of god hand is that it was made in a very short amount of time it was pretty much shinji mikami said i want to make this fuck ass game that only i'm probably gonna like but regardless i've got this group of people that see what i'm trying to do they see the vision we're gonna make this shit regardless and i think they made the game in less than a year it's one of those stories so if he could come back somehow and just fill in the blanks, add more stuff. We get that 60 FPS. God Hand would legitimately be one of the best action games on the market. I mean, to this day, right now, it's sort of like a mythical action game in, in the eyes of people that really love character action. Especially because IGN gave it a 3 out of 10 back in the day so it's one of the big proponents of look look game journalists have no fucking idea what they're talking about when it comes to action games they gave one of the most advanced nuanced great feeling action games a 3 out of 10 because they suck you know it's it's one of the first games that really shed that sort of narrative to light i don't know just i want to play god hand and not have it be on an emulator imagine god hand with trophies you know what i'm saying so god hand Definitely, 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 I would love a remaster or re-release of this game. And people would probably appreciate it nowadays. I, I don't think it would go the way it went back in the day. I think people would see God again nowadays and be like, wow, this is something. Ninja Gaiden. One of the old Godfathers, pillars, I guess you should say, of action games. Ninja Gaiden 2 is Team Ninja's probably swang son still in my opinion ever since dude left it ain't been the same for them that's all i'll say mainly for ninja garden it's already gotten um a re-release but the thing about that re-release is it re-releases the sigma version which isn't the same as the og version which i kind of like more so we still don't have that version re-released but whatever for ninja garden i'm mainly looking for a sequel for obvious reasons. I think Ninja Gaiden 2 was great. Ninja Gaiden 3 was good when they re-released that. So a fourth Ninja Gaiden, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I'm saying I want it because I like Ninja Gaiden and I want another Ninja Gaiden, but realistically, I don't know if Team Ninja even has the budget or the talent, sadly enough, to even make another Ninja Gaiden. A lot of their games now are low budget, double uh, A and Ninja Gaiden 2 for its time was fucking quadruple A honestly before Ubisoft was throwing that shit around Ninja Gaiden was probably the closest to a quadruple A we're gonna get you know for the time if they made a fourth one I think they have the combat mechanics down I think they can make a fun Ninja Gaiden game but do they have the means to polish it do they have the means to make it look pretty you know do they have the means to have fun set pieces because ninja garden is one of those games where it needs that production and without the production it's gonna feel like a hollow sort of imitation of what it was before so yeah ninja garden is weird it's like even though i really want a ninja garden because i love ninja garden 2 and i think a new ninja garden regardless would just be a fun good action game i think if they make a ninja garden and they don't absolutely smash it out of the park we ain't getting no more Ninja Guidance. So I feel like I understand the hesitance with them and why they, you know, we haven't really heard the name Ninja Gaiden in a long time. Um, I will say that they do do a good job of adding a lot of reused moves into their other games. 
Like, they fucking find a way to add the Izuna drop in every game. I'll tell you what, they really do. So, they know. <laughs> I think they know that, like, maybe that's their, you know, that's their end game. You know, maybe they're, 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 they're trying to build up their repertoire and funds and staff so that one day they can make a great Ninja Gaiden game again. Um, but it might be a long time. Because Rise of the Ronin, it was I. Tales of Destiny Director's Cut and Tales of Destiny Rebirth. Now, this can also go in multiple directions. A. A re-release or remaster or combo pack of Destiny Director's Cut and Rebirth. Translated. Released. Here you go. Finally, you guys can play these great JRPGs that have been locked to Japan since the PS2 days. Here you go. Finally... You guys can play it. Here you go. There's that aspect to it. Which would be insane. I'm not going to lie. But also, we're probably a month or two out from all these games just being translated by fans. So, from that standpoint, you can most likely, by the beginning of 2025, just play both these games completely translated in English. So... I don't know how much we need a translation as like hardcore fans who are probably going to play these games. Like, do we really need the translation now? Because literally we have them because of the fans. I think still I would want an official means to play the game. One, just to pop a few trophies, but two, just because like I would want to support it. I would want to buy it and spend my money on it and be like, hey, yeah, we actually do give a fuck about these games. But now let's look at it from a remaster or remake perspective there's a lot of choices for the tales of series um it could be symphonia abyss fantasia since that's the first one destiny director's cut me personally i would want a uh, destiny director's cut you know if we're gonna go round up 3d just because i think that cast of characters and that story a lot of it is the best of tales in my opinion and it's like almost the best version of what a Tales of game can be, in my opinion. I'm not saying the game is perfect, but to story, to characters, to graphics, to Mystic Guards, to everything that you'd want from a Tales of game, I think Tales of Destiny Director's Cut does it really well. And I also think that cast of characters is one of the better casts, um, especially Stan. I, I think Stan is like top three Tales of MCs. Rebirth, I can't speak on that too much. I've never played it because that one's not translated yet. So I don't know if they would pick that one for a ground up 3D remake. Probably not. I don't think it's the most popular. Yeah, just the PS2 Tales of games. Destiny Director's Cut, Tales of Rebirth. Just fucking re-release them, man. Okay, I, you know, I can't be mad at them anymore. They're remastering Graces and they're actually putting a monochrome of effort into it you know they're actually adding new features that'll make the game funner to play i mean they fucked up the sound effects somehow but whatever so i can't be too mad because they're remastering one of the best tales of games but it is a big hole in like the ah like i'm a tales fan i want to play these games and we can't play probably two of the best ones in the entire franchise. And that's still upsetting to me. Next game, Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is fun. It's just a fun, open world, sort of martial arts combat game. You do get guns, but you don't start shooting guns until like the latter half of the game. The reason why I would want another Sleeping Dogs is one, we don't get a lot of martial arts games 
you know, we don't get a lot of punching people in the face. But also, I think the style of the game, um, just like a open world, not linear is is the right term, but like just that simple open world collectathon Ubisoft kind of game. They definitely get more of a bad rep nowadays, but I think we are coming up on the cycle of like now. I'm not going to say I miss them, but I wouldn't mind another Sleeping Dogs, especially if it was done well. More moves, better combat, all that shit. I think a, a Sleeping Dogs 2, which just takes what Sleeping Dogs is and make it and, and just makes it better. I think that would be really good. You know, Sleeping Dogs is still a good game. Uh, I think the, the gameplay is still fun. Uh, I don't really remember the story. A Sleeping Dogs 2, I think for me and a lot of other people would just be really exciting. I don't know if it's exciting because of the IP. Like, I don't know if me or a lot of people have an attachment to like the main character or anything like that. I just think the genre of game, like just an open world, beat em up, action game, you know, like thriller type GTA kind of game. I mean, it's been a while since the last GTA, so. Sleeping Dogs definitely could use a sequel. I don't know if a Sleeping Dodge remake would be really, because there's already a Sleeping Dodge Definitive Edition, which to be fair is just a little bump up in resolution and frame rate with all the content added. But a remake of Sleeping Dogs, I feel like that's that makes less sense than a full-blown sequel. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. This one's weird, okay? Because I think Sonic Adventure 1 is a good game. Sonic Adventure 2 is not a good game. Let's just be real, guys. Let's just cut the bullshit. Sonic Adventure 2, 30% of it is fun. Knuckles' missions, Rouge's missions, Eggman's missions, Tails' missions. Those are not fun, especially the treasure hunting missions. Don't get me started on Knuckles levels, oh my god. So, I think a remake of 2 from that perspective would be interesting. The thing about 2, the vibe of 2 is completely different of the vibe that they have going down. Now Sonic is meta, now Sonic is corny, now Sonic is cringe. So, you know, they're even trying to retroactively rewrite uh, certain aspects of these characters like now Amy isn't in, in love with Sonic. She's not crushing over Sonic now She's an independent girl boss like, like I I don't care. I I don't care, but I think it goes to show that the adventure 2 vibe is Now clashing with what they have going on in this modern era So what would a remake of 2 really look like would they would they keep the writing the same would they legit keep all of the cutscenes the exact same and just maybe try to update them visually because if they really did just take adventure 2 and then make better graphics and then re-release it i ain't buying that shit at least not for 50 60 dollars because the game's not fun now a remake of 2 more ground up listen i would say take out knuckles and tails and eggman and rouge just fucking remove them just remove all those missions or you really gotta commit and make them fun, make them better, make the levels more fun to to navigate uh, at when you're playing as Knuckles, the, the uh, treasure hunting stage. Dude, that fucking water stage. I don't know what it's called, but that water stage where you gotta fuck with the levels of the water and blah, blah, blah. All my Sonic Adventure 2 runs end on that stage because I can't be bothered to finish it. So I think if they took the game and genuinely tried to make it better, there could be something interesting there. The first game, a lot easier to work with. I think also makes a lot more sense from like a, do either of these games actually need a remake? I think the first one would probably make more sense than the second one, uh, especially because it is the first one. We should probably start with the first one and then move over to the second one. But that game is also fun. I'll say it, Tails, fun to control. Amy, fun to control. Knuckles' missions, yeah, I don't like treasure hunting stages, 
but they're not insufferable in Sonic Adventure. Uh, Omega, fun to control. Big, takes like 30 fucking minutes and then you're done. So like, I think overall, it's just a funner package. So if they took that game, gave it a visual boost, re-released it, maybe added some more content here and there, I, I think it'd be a lot more easier and a lot more well-received as well. So Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, it's a little weird, uh, especially because I feel like reg regardless, we will get a remake of one of these games, most likely both of these games eventually. Like if Sega is ever about to go down under, that's their that's their big red button. You know what I mean? That's their up. Like we need we need money, we need engagement. What do we do? Boom, they hit the fucking Sonic Adventure remake button, and then all of a sudden everyone's happy again. So I do think eventually we'll get them. I think it's just more so interesting. How would they do it? So Sen Ran Kagura. Now, I know there's gonna be gameplay on the screen. It's gonna look crazy, especially because it's gonna be Peach Beach Splash and not Estival Versus or Burst Renewal, which are the hack and slash action games, which are the ones that I like. I just can't have. I just can't get gameplay for that because I don't have my PlayStation at the moment, and I'm not buying it on PC to get 30 seconds of footage. The main reason why I want a new one is because the way this series went out is so horrible. I think Estival Versus genuinely is a good action game. I think it has a lot of content. I think the characters and the story, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's good, but as someone who likes anime, I get what they're going for. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, sitting here looking at the shit like taking it all super uber seat like it's just like you know like the girls they, they run around they got all the t you know like it's it's just like you're just here to have fun but regardless i think they're good action games especially because it's one of the action game it's one of those types of action games where the action mechanics aren't the most nuanced and depth and blah 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 but you can cancel some animations here and there and there are a lot of playable characters the, which is where you would get your um, variety. It's just all the different playable characters. Estival versus a great game. Burst Renewal, not a great game. That was the last Sendrin Kagura that was like action oriented. I was like, I sort of pseudo mainline. Burst Renewal was a remake of the first game, which was a 3DS game. So Estival versus has a lot of playable characters, a lot of fun DLC characters. And in Burst Renewal, what they do is some of those characters that were in the base roster of Estival Versus, they locked them behind DLC. Their reasoning for this is, oh, well, those characters technically shouldn't be here because we're remaking the first one. The first one only deals with, I think it's Hanzo and I think it's Crimson Squad is a... Uh, like the like the quote-unquote bad people but it's only those two factions and estival versus added like two more factions so the sequel to estival versus has half the playable characters of the last game which is really weird and it's, it's kind of scummy that you'd have to pay for them too so the game just sort of went out on like a really sour like wet fart note and a fifth one was announced a long time ago but now it's just been in limbo, mainly because of censorship. Sony has been around that time when these games were coming out and the fifth one was announced. They were really cracking down on the censorship to the point that Burst Renewal actually had a mechanic removed from the console versions. But I think it's in the Steam versions. So it's a really weird series in the sense that like, one, I don't think a fifth one would sell a lot. Two, it's probably a hassle to even get that shit made in the first place. And three, if they tone it down, I'm sure a majority of the fan base isn't going to show up. So I get why there isn't a fifth game. But I think they should have one last chance to really just redeem themselves. To make one last Senran Kagura with all the playable characters. None of that nickel and diamond bullshit with all the DLC. 
maybe add a new mechanic or two to actually make the gameplay slightly more nuanced and i think we would have a great game on our hands genuinely a great action game but you know everyone's so sensitive nowadays you know they look at the titties they look at the anime titties oh my god it's so perverted it's so this it's so that i get it i get it man i'm not mad at it i get it but lighten up all right and the final game on the list sengoku basara a remaster of four or maybe not a remaster because technically it's already been remastered but sengoku basara 4 not only is it a great action game it is one of the best maybe the best muso game you can play in my opinion capcom took what koei tecmo was doing with dynasty warriors and said oh let's actually take the nuance action mechanics and gameplay that we know how to do from series like devil may cry and resident evil and add it into this muso style of game where you're one man versus an army of people. And I think they just took Toei's lunch money. Just fucking blew their shit out of the water. Honestly. But Muso games don't sell. So even though it's a it's a it's a great action game, it didn't sell. The last ones that were reported to America didn't sell that well. So we never got the fourth one, which is the best one. Without a doubt. It's the best one. So a re-release, remat, I don't even know if that's the right way to put it. Just a port of Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi would be fantastic. Now, a sequel would be even better, obviously. A Sengoku Basara 5, hell yeah. I mean, the fourth one was good. Why wouldn't the fifth one be good? But if they make a fifth one, will it be released in North America? That's a really big question. Now, I think Capcom is in their era of wanting their franchises to be sort of worldwide you know, Monster Hunter Worldwide, Resident Evil's Worldwide, um, Devil May Cry, you know, all these series released day one, you know, it's not, it's not like, like it was back in the PS2 days. So with that said, if they make a Sengoku Basara, they would want it to, I think, release in Japan and America. Would a Sengoku Basara 5 sell in the West? Probably not. As much as I hate to say it, probably not. Action games are already a hard sell. Muso action games are even harder sell because they're known as, oh, those are those button masher games. Those are those button masher games. Oh, they made another one of those. Everyone will just look at Sengoku Basara 5 and just assume, oh, it's another Dynasty Warriors. And it's not, even though it's clearly not. So it's sad. It really is. I get why they don't give attention to the series regardless of its quality. I get it. But give it one more shot. Let's just give it one more shot. You know what I mean? I, you know, I'll buy that shit three times. You get, you know what I mean? Let's let's try one more time. It, it has been like a decade type shit. All right. And yeah, that's the list. If you watched till, till the end of this video, I greatly appreciate it. And let me know what games you guys would like to want to come back. I know... People like Dark Cloud, that's one that I dabbled on putting on the list, but I honestly don't have much to say about it because I didn't really play it when I was a kid. I know way of the samurai fans are, you know, the, I think that game is also very unique and it would be cool to get another, like, try at that. You know, let me know in the comments whatever games you think should get a re-release, remaster, whatever. And yeah, that's the video. Thank you for watching.